I'd like to cover a topic we hear a lot about, interest rates, but specifically how interest rates move. See, it all starts with securitization. That's where we take a bunch of individual mortgages and put them together into a giant pool of mortgage loans. That pool of mortgage loans is further segmented down into mortgage bonds, which themselves are classified based upon their risk profile, from AAA rated bonds, lowest risk bonds, to unrated or junk bonds, bonds of the highest risk. Now, mortgage-backed securities are traded every day just like stocks. And, like stocks, mortgage-backed securities are very volatile, meaning that they move up and down throughout the day and from day to day. Now, the price of these bonds and the mortgage rates that are tied to them move a lot like a teeter-totter, meaning that when one goes up, the other goes down, and vice versa. To monitor these price movements, we use charts that look a lot like this one, called a candlestick chart. This chart was provided by Mortgage Market Guide, the industry leader in tracking mortgage bonds. Interestingly enough, Mortgage Market Guide was also the first company to bring candlestick charting to the lending industry. Now, we use these charts to predict and look for patterns in these price movements. And these patterns have all kinds of different names, like downward breakout and double bottom and stochastic crossover. But we'll make it simple for you. Green is good and red is bad. Anytime you see green on this chart, it's good. It means bond prices are going up and rates are coming down. Anytime you see red, that's bad. It means bond prices are dropping and interest rates are going up. The point here is that bond prices change. Mortgage rates just follow those prices. So, what can we monitor in order to stay in front of these price changes? And that leads us to a big debate in the lending industry, the debate between the 10-year treasury and mortgage-backed securities. Now, depending upon what you read and depending upon where you look, people will say that 10-year treasury is the preferred indice for monitoring where mortgage rates are going in the future. But we find that flawed. We find that flawed because there's a difference between the 10-year treasury and mortgage-backed securities, specifically three differences. There are differences in maturity, there are differences in risk, and there are differences in correlation between the two. And what we found is that the 10-year treasury and mortgage-backed securities oftentimes diverge, meaning that when one is going up, the other indice, more often than not, is going down. To make this point, we say that if you want to know what the share price is of one share of Microsoft, you don't watch Apple. Now granted, they're both computer companies, they'll both give you a great idea of where the technology sector is headed, but if you want to know the specific price of a specific stock, you have to watch that stock. The same holds true with regards to the 10-year treasury versus mortgage-backed securities. If you want to know where mortgage rates are headed, you have to monitor data on mortgage-backed securities. Now, having said that, we tell loan officers to watch mortgage-backed security data, but also be aware of the 10-year treasury, and in fact, be aware of the economy as a whole. What we say is loan officers need to have a 360-degree view of the market. And the reason we say this is because mortgage-backed securities are all competing for the same investment dollar. By that, we mean that the economy as a whole has an impact on the prices of mortgage-backed securities. Depending upon what unemployment is doing, or gas prices, or inflation, or the stock market, all of those things have an impact on the price of mortgage bonds, and therefore, mortgage rates. Now, the one thing we should really try to avoid is the media, and the reason for that is because the media is behind it best. This is another mortgage market guide candlestick chart, and what we're illustrating here is that articles that come out on media outlets like CNN Money are oftentimes behind the curve. When rates are improving, you'll see an article saying that mortgage transactions are down because rates are high, and the reverse is also true. When rates are going up, you'll also read articles saying that rates have dropped. The take-home point here is that the last thing we should be watching for our data on interest rates is the media. Now to switch gears, let's look at what the Federal Reserve is doing to keep rates low, specifically the Fed's mortgage bond purchase program, and why the Fed nowadays is acting an awful lot like a diamond company. The Federal Reserve has promised to purchase $1.25 trillion of mortgage bonds throughout the first quarter of 2010. Through December, they're almost there, having purchased $1.07 trillion of mortgage-backed securities. Now, everybody knows that diamonds are expensive, but why? Well, to answer that, we're going to have to go back to Economics 101. See, it's all about supply and demand. When supply of something is low, demand grows. And a byproduct of that high demand is that the price of that item increases. So wherever you see high demand, you typically see high prices. Now, the diamond companies artificially keep diamond supply levels low and increase demand. With that increased demand comes higher diamond prices. So the diamond companies are sort of artificially making diamond prices high. 
the Federal Reserve is working in much the same way. The Fed is creating the market for mortgage-backed securities, keeping demand high. Now, with that high demand, the price of those mortgage-backed securities go up. And what happens when the price goes up? That's right, rates drop. So we know how it works. The next question of will it work is pretty easy to answer. It has worked. In fact, it's worked beautifully well. The reason why rates are currently so low is because of the Fed's involvement in buying these mortgage bonds. But we know how it'll work, and we know that it did work. The real question becomes, how will it end? See, the Fed has stretched their purchase program through the first quarter of 2010, but they didn't change the amount of money they're spending. So they're stretching the same amount of money over a longer period of time, which means that what we expect to see is rates gradually rising throughout the first quarter of next year. Now, this gradual increase in rates leaves loan officers in a bit of a pickle trying to manage an onslaught of new business. And underwriting departments are overloaded with people trying to close their loan before the Fed stops their involvement. So what should you, the client, do? Well, first and foremost, you should be proactive. You should meet with your loan officer today to schedule a consultation. Act now before rates start to move upwards.